Greetings from Bethel Memorial Baptist Church. We had prayer meeting tonight. It is Valentine's Day. A lot of time to think about different things that we favor and that show us love. I asked a couple of questions that I said, what's your favorite Bible verse? What's the greatest Bible verse? And first person shared uh, 1 John 4, 15, I think it is, or 14. This is the testimony that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in his son. And then uh, a few others were shared. And I said, no one said John 3, 16. Well, that's the obvious one. Well, I want to share a verse, which I'll share in a moment, that someone suggested is the greatest verse in the Bible. I then asked, what, uh, what's a great love song? Um, and there were some answers given. I won't share them. But I did play a, a song for everybody in prayer meeting called His Robes for Mine. I'll, I'll include a link. Uh, to that in the uh, description of, of this YouTube. Uh, but it just it talks about how Jesus took everything that we deserved and gave us everything we didn't deserve. Um, instead of, he, he was considered God's enemy when our, our sin was placed on him. And uh, we are considered God's family. And just, it, it, there's so many wonderful lines in that. And so we talked about a love song. And then I was thinking about one more thing. I forgot to talk about it tonight. But when was the, the last time someone showed love for you? Um, and and what what struck you? What what made you know that they loved you? Um, I I yesterday I'd sent an email to somebody I hadn't seen in a while, and it was great to see them respond right away that they knew I was loved them, and and I believe they they loved me and. And it was just, uh, I wasn't sure how the email was going to go. And that was encouraging. But my neighbor, um, with that big, heavy snow, I have a parking pad. And I have a plan for how I'm going to uh, shovel it. I put my cars right down the middle and just pushed everything off to the side. And and uh, it was a heavy snow, but I was able to do the side. But boy, when that truck goes by and plows you in, um, the neighbor said, don't do that. My husband will be at home tonight after work, and he has a, a a plow on the front of his mower, and he'll be happy to clean that out for you. That was just, it was just neat. It was just, just a wonderful thing that, simple things, simple things. Someone shared tonight, uh, that we had had a program at our church where uh, coats were donated. Uh, we've had a, a group called Reset Recovery that has gone down, taking people from our church and others uh, down to Kensington, where a big hub for drug use down in Philadelphia and they work with a group called Grace Project and they just uh just seek to make a difference providing food providing health care providing all kinds of things well we collected coats uh, not just us but reset recovery collected coats and they thought it'd be go down in one one car it turned out I think if I heard her explain it right three different cars that were needed because of all the coats that were collected and and knowing that they passed it out last Thursday and, and the, the, the cold snap that we're going through right now, what great timing and just, just a blessing. So I, I just share those things because of love. But then I, I just want to share um, a, a verse that I think really talks about the love that, that Jesus has for us, that God has for us. This is such an amazing, amazing verse. Second Corinthians 5.21, for our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In other words, Jesus exchanged his righteousness for our sin so that we could have his righteousness. On Sunday, I preached a, a familiar passage where Jesus said we need to take up the cross or we cannot follow him. We take up a cross and follow him. That's what a disciple does. And in those days, the cross wasn't a piece of jewelry. It was a death sentence. And we talked about considering ourselves dead to sin and the things of this world in our flesh so that we can reap and have eternal blessing. I hope that that is true of you, that you've done that. Uh, there's one other thing I'll share that I've heard people talking about the Super Bowl and the Super Bowl uh, commercial that he gets us where they were washing the feet of many, many different groups of people. And people have all kinds of opinions about that. One of the opinions I heard was they spent a lot of money to put that commercial 
should they have put that money someplace else, maybe helping feeding, uh, feeding those who are hungry. But I just thought, you know, we could feed somebody who's hungry for a period of time and that helps them in this world. And we should do that whenever we can and make sure. But the purpose of that was to make people see the eternal glory of knowing Jesus who understands and loves us. He is the only savior. He is the only one that could fulfill the law of God perfectly and then die not for his sins, but for ours. And he rose again from the dead, showing his power over sin and death. And it's my prayer that this Valentine's Day, we would begin with the love of Christ and the love of the Father to give his son, Jesus, for us so that we could be his family. Because any other love grows out of the fact that he first loved us. Let me close in prayer. Father, I thank you. And I pray for anyone that hears this, that they would know, that they would know the reality of your great love seen in Jesus Christ. And I pray that your spirit would move in their hearts, that they would come to know him as personal savior and be forgiven of their sins and know that they will be taken to heaven because of knowing the son of God, the savior of the world. I thank you, Father, for who you are and all that you will do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless.